Koch, good morning. Thanks for taking some time. Yeah, good morning, guys. I appreciate having me on. Hey, tell us how uh, the beginning of camp uh, feels different than, say, summer camp last year, because the same protocols are in place, right? You guys are all masked up. You're encouraged not to hang out, social distancing and all that. Does it feel the same as summer camp? You know, Matt, I don't, I don't think it feels the same necessarily. I think last year in summer camp, uh, there were a lot of unknowns going forward. And, um, you know, we, we really... Um, know what's ahead of us. And so last year going into summer camp, the protocols were, were, were new. Um, we hadn't experienced them before. And I think this year in spring training, we understand the protocols. Um, I wouldn't say they're easier, but I would say that uh, we're, we're a little more receptive and, and understanding of, of why they're in place. And, and uh, you know, uh, going forward, they're going to be there and, uh, and, and we're, we respect them and, and we're going to follow them. Hey, Mark, it looks like, uh, looking at video is all we get here, um, that it's not split up in groups. Remember last year, it was kind of like you're from 8 to 10, you come in from 11 to 1. It looks like the whole group is together. A am I right? That's really not the case. Um, unfortunately, we're still kind of in groups. Um, you know, we go mm. out, I think the groups may be a little bit larger than they were last year. Um, I think, you know, we do our best to, to get the groups uh, – as large as possible without, you know, violating protocol, obviously. But the stretch times are all separated. Uh, Ryan Christensen, our bench coach, I don't know how he does it, uh, but he grinds on the schedule every day. To uh, it, it's it's almost a, a chemistry test or um, a, a stats a stat sheet because there's different times, different groups. I think we have seven groups in total today going through stations. Um, like I said, we have four different stretch times. Uh, there's an active warm up station now. Um, early work is limited because the guys can't show up, uh, you know, two hours or three hours ahead of time like they used to. So, I mean, in, in one case, fortunately for me, I'm not out on the field at 630 with a bag of balls hitting ground balls. But in the other, it's, it's difficult to get in some extra work right now. So, so that's what happens when you guys are at work. And Harold and I have, we've wondered about this for a while now, Cots. Like, what happens when you guys are done? Because you're done early. You go home, you can't do much, right? I mean, maybe play golf. I don't know. What, what are guys doing when you're done at the field? It, it's great that you mentioned that because golf is the one thing that we're allowed to do. Through all the protocols, somehow someone loves to play golf, whether it's at the <laughs> Union or the Players Association, because golf is allowed. And, uh, you know, for, for a staff, though, I mean, we're, we're actually we, – we're a little bit later in the mornings on a start time. Um, we get off around yesterday. We ended our workout at, at 120. And so by the time you come back, you know, go through the day, set, set the next day schedule. I mean, we walked out of here yesterday at 3.30, 4 in the afternoon. Uh, so wow. you know, it's, not, it's not as far as you think. But, yes, Maddie, uh, the Arizona fun spring training uh, has not been – uh, as fun as it normally is. when <laughs> Nobody's going to the Scottsdale Mall uh, and no. sitting outside the Kona Grill with a plate of sushi just spending four hours killing yeah, the day. That's, 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 that's too bad, that's too a, bad, because Arizona's crash. such a great spot. Hey, Mark, so let, let's talk about you a little bit. Um, the third base coaching, you, like Matt said, you've done everything. Is this kind of a bridge for you? Do you want to manage? Are you looking to, to, to be a manager in the big leagues? You know, if that one lies in, in my future, yes. I've gone through the process. I've had um, several interviews the past two seasons, opportunities that exist in front of me. Um, the timing and, and uh, you know, just wasn't there. Um, but I, I love here. I love it here in Oakland. I love working uh, on this staff with Bob Melvin uh, and the rest of the guys, Mike Aldretti, Darren Bush, Scott Emerson, uh, Marcus Jensen. So it, it's been great. It's, uh, like I said, you know, the growth and experience of doing several different roles. Um, I understand now um, the complexity, uh, the work that goes into, you know, as an infield coach, as a third base coach, uh, it's a lot different than being a quality control coach. And uh, there's a lot more responsibility, uh, a lot more on my plate. And, uh, and I wanted to tackle that. And, uh, and I'm in that role and I'm, and I'm excited about it. That's good because I'm sure they'd be like, go. If that ever opened up, they'd be, they'd be thrilled that you got an opportunity. Go ahead, Matt. And I want to go back to your playing career because you have, uh, you have a strong identity with uh, not one, not two, but really three uniforms. You played a long time, 17-year career, a couple of stints with the pods, A's. 
Uh, a lot of people remember you most strongly as a Marlin. Yeah. I know that Boog Shambi always talks about the, you being a career Marlin, even though he's incorrect about that. He knows, but he always <laughs> remembers you as a Marlin. Um, but, but here's some images from the playing career of Mark Kotze. Give us the first thing that pops into your mind. <laughs> well, I knew that was. I knew you guys were going to put that as the first picture. But I dude, knew it. That's so mad, V. Look at man. the acrobatics. Look at the skill. <laughs> My back doesn't that, bend that way. That's right there. With that's after two back surgeries, Maddie, right there. So that play, and it haunts me to this day. So first inning, top of one. Yeah, Prince Fielder, John Jay coming on. I'm going to score. Oh, I'm not going to score. That's a terrible read. <laughs> and I'm in charge of base running. Can you believe oh. that guy right there is in charge of base running? Were, were wow. you out, though? Were you out? Oh, yeah, okay. definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's all you got? No, I got more. Oh, okay. I, I mean, mean, just because let's that let's do image. something nice. The guy was unbelievable. Got, okay, how about this one? Oh, what, boy. This brawl was epic, and you had to keep Carlos Quinton from getting into some trouble here. Tell us about this. So this, and you don't see yep, Zach Greinke, but former teammate year prior, uh, we went to the playoffs together. He had some history with Carlos. Carlos was a guy that wasn't afraid to get hit. He wasn't afraid to be on top of the plate. Zach wanted to, you know, obviously Zach and him had probably three or four uh, hit by pitches prior to that. And Carlos made his decision that, that he was tired of getting hit and then he was going to go let Zach know about it. And uh, being that I was a teammate of both of theirs, I, I tried my best to get there and uh, and separate them. And, 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 you know, there was an unfortunate injury out of that. Um, but I, I tip my hat to Zach, too, for, for standing in there. Carlos Quentin is no small man. <laughs> He's a yeah, big dude, dude he, man. You know, hey, that, that takes me down a weird road. I want to ask about this because I, I think a lot of fans just don't really believe that sometimes there are personal vendettas in the game that almost supersede the team matchup. And I remember for years working in Milwaukee, Julian Tavares had a thing with Mike Matheny, and he was going to drill him every single time he got up there. <laughs> That, that kind of stuff happens. Is it happening less now, do you think, than it did when you broke in 20-plus years ago? Well, that's tough, man. That's a tough question. I, I don't know. Um, personal vendettas, I don't – I mean, I haven't really experienced that. I'm I, In that situation, Carlos was just – yeah, he was tired of getting hit. And, uh, you know, so I don't know if there was something that Zach had or that Carlos had against each other. Um, you you, you kind of you never really know that it's an underlying maybe it's an underlying issue but for me um, I've been around a couple guys that just seem that hey they they come inside and they hit you. Mm. Yeah, okay, I, two, we got two more images for you. These are I, these no. are good. I, I got good stuff coming on the back end. Okay, here's All here's right, a, here's a good one. <laughs> Daily routine right there. Look at how miserable. Look at that hair. That, this, <laughs> that hair. Where that hair go, Maddie? Dude, the yeah. look on your face is like. I feel so bad right now. My body it's is funny. just. <laughs> yeah, when I came yesterday, Bobby Crosby, a teammate of mine here in Oakland, we sat next to each other. Bobby Crosby is going to uh, manage a double A team for us. And Bobby looked at me and he goes, it's good to see you walking straight and standing up straight. I don't really remember a day that you walked in the locker room that I thought you were going to be able to play. So Here's so. another one. This is also from 2006. This is the last one we got for you to comment on. <laughs> I think that's me saying, why is Nick Swisher sitting on the couch? Why? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? Why, why shouldn't he be sitting on the couch? Trying to stretch I think out that's, and get a nap. That's Nick's rookie year. Back then, we, there was some hazing to, to, you know, the rookies. So, at that point, it was like, Nick, get, get a, just get away from me. Let me have my space. I need some time. Uh, Got it. That, that was before he was all Swishalicious and Brohio and all that stuff. That was. Uh, he had a lot of flair when he got to the big. Yeah, he had Nick it. Was Nick. You don't want to take that away from Nick. Yeah. Unbelievable. Hey, I want to ask you, um, you know, we're in that, that age now where the two-way player is really celebrated in the big leagues. We're watching it happen. I want to throw this out to people. They may not know this. The year you won the Golden Spikes, 1995, hit 422 and had an ERA of 0-3-1 as a closer for the champion Cal State Fullerton Titans back then in the College World Series. So, Mark, if you were coming up now and you were doing what you did in college, would you have been looked at and probably used as a two-way player? You know, Harold, I think so. I think in the evolution of the game, um, you know, the versatility of that role, if you can provide – uh, a high level of performance on that end, yes. Um, I asked to pitch 
to almost all of my managers outside of Jim Leland my first year because I was too scared to. But, you know, I, I always wanted an inning on the mound. That would have been a dream come true. And, and unfortunately, it didn't happen for me. Um, I warmed up once, I think, when I was in San Diego and um, thought I was going to get in there. I think it was a uh, ending inning double play that, that happened. But um, I do think that the, the future of the game, there will be two-way players and, and there will be opportunity for guys to uh, to have success in that role. It, it, it's a lot more demanding at the big league level to, uh, than it is in college. So uh, the role you know has to be modified as, as they've tried to do with, with uh, Otani and in, in utilizing that DH spot as well. But I think now think looking back I, I i really wish i would have i'd love to pitch Pitching i, I never realized that control. i never realized you you never got on the mound in the big leagues i never had an inning never wow. threw a pitch. what a waste <laughs> i mean this guy's arm was what a blessing now you could spin it what a blessing and i never failed there hey Cos, Glory to college but yeah thanks for the visit man uh continued thanks. success to you with the a's and uh we'll, we'll check in with you down the road thanks man